Baby Yoda. Grogu. I would love the baby Grogu. Baby Yoda. Yeah, man. Grogu. Grogu. Yeah. Great. I mean, just, you know, for a while, what a crazy we were ex- told officially, do not call him Baby Yoda. He is Grogu. Oh, right, not in any right. interviews. Yeah. Do not say that word. Whoops. And then at some point, they just gave up. That's Did you so experience good. the practical? Oh yes, Grogu. Right. Yes. Oh. And it's ridiculous because you know it's a puppet <laughs> and it reduces you to complete idiocy because he's so cute. Yeah. And I had lunch with him several interact times. With him. <laughs> <laughs> you want a little bit of the <laughs> Oh, the you don't eat? Okay. Side conversations with him. Oh, because sure. also the, the puppeteers, like they're constantly watching and listening. <laughs> and so you might be sitting off to the side just like, What's up, Grogu? How you doing today? And then he'll move and he'll oh, like, Wow. <laughs> That's yeah. got to be the coolest thing ever. It's That's like adult great. Muppets. That is awesome. It is. It's like if you were literally in the Muppets movie and you were just but with adults. You could just hang out, you know? It'd be so cool. Yeah. Yeah, I like the longer faces. Why are you flexing, Andy? <laughs> I know. Hey, hey look at like this. He's like, That's amazing. amazing. Check no, this out. Actually, I wasn't flexing, but I but I appreciate <laughs> the know, compliment. Do a little it was press an with accidental this. Flex. You know, oh, God, you know, can't help it. I've been working out, so and now he thinks he thinks out, I he's... he thinks I'm flexing, but that's just my natural physique now. I've so. been training my whole life. Andy has gone in and For out three of months. It, and now he's just into <laughs> he always goes to the extremes where he's just like, I will work out every minute of every day of every moment of every time, you know. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, you're gonna burn out, bro. You're not gonna have not yet. So you know. Yeah, anyway, that works. Yet. Are we done talking about your physique? Because I'm tired of it. You brought it up. No, you're the you, one that you commented. Did. You I did. But that's because he physically does it, so it inspires me to roast him. Everybody. Yes. I think we're live. I don't know if people can hear this or if people care, but I think we're actually live right now. Oh, we're wow. doing another episode of the Brother yeah. Love Pod, everybody. It's happy Friday. Friday. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Um, Matt, you want to take it? You want me to take it? I mean, we have a very Joe? special guest in, yeah, the, you're already in, the, uh, in the house. Oh, thanks. I'm already talking. <laughs> well, if I don't talk, we don't have a show. So, no, um, we have a very special guest in-house, yep. which is always great. It's always great when you are in-house with somebody because, you know, the Zooming thing ever since the COVID, everybody's Zooming. Well, and... it's just not It's just not our generation, really. No, honestly, I hate it. I still hate the Zooms. They want to do everything in the world now with Zooms. They want to do remote learning and remote casting. Well, with the and... Apple, you know, new VR headset. It's going to oh, be even more interesting. Very nice. And Elon's chip, yeah. his head chip. I was just reading about that yesterday. Yeah, uh, it's crazy. And we'll talk about that. But every, every everybody... Um, when will we talk about this, Joe? After we're talking about it right now after I introduce drive? Emily Swell, everybody yeah. in the yeah. house. For 20 minutes, Joe. She's done so many things. We're going to get into it. But yes. she's been on amazing TV series. Uh, you may have heard The Mandalorian, which is uh, one of our faves. Obviously, oh. everybody's favorite. Oh. It was epic. Yeah, I love the show. Just working with John Favreau. But we'll talk about that. Yep. Um, but anyway, she's here in-house. We're so happy to have her. She's petting Shmi, who is a constant distraction underneath yep. the desk. She knows I'm a sucker. Uh, yeah, and he's... Yeah. He's just an interesting, a typical Frenchie, headstrong yeah. and annoying but lovable, just like Very his lovable. owner Andy. He's strong, <laughs> annoying, Man, and this, lovable. I, they this really is my life. Yeah. This is my life. This is my yeah. life. I'm just gonna do a couple of peck flicks. <laughs> <laughs> I think I should have maybe not worn a t-shirt. Uh, I guess not. I'm just too much. You mean of a just go shirtless? Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> I think that would be even. <laughs> That's what it is. You come even... back to him. I think this is probably better. He got an awkward patch of hair on his chest. Andy, you're not wearing any shirt. Oh God. Uh, oh, good anyway. stuff. Welcome. Hey, yeah, hi. thanks for having me. Thank you. Thanks, thanks for so, having me. Thanks so much for being here. Yeah, we're in a um, we. You know, it's so funny this this time of year in Los Angeles. You go either either rain or sun, and just yo yos back and forth. And yeah, um, well, we well, three days ago it was almost eighty degrees. Yeah, and now it's pouring and yeah, cold. It's been raining. Looks yeah. like it's sweater weather, Joe. It's sweater weather. Sweater weather. Sure. Sure. Joe's got a nice <laughs> knit sweater <laughs> on. Sure. Really? Uh, yeah. You have a sweater. Hey! This is I didn't what get I love about winter in LA, though. Yes. You just yeah. you put on your fashionable layers, but you know it's never going to get too bad. No, no, it doesn't ever get too bad. Too where bad. are you from originally? <laughs> I'm from Florida. Florida. So I'm a wimp when it comes Florida. to heat. I love Florida, um, but I lived in New York for many years, so yeah. I have dealt with winters. Yes, okay. I love Florida. Uh, we grew up in Philadelphia, so we were obviously basically the same, right? It is yeah, the very same. Honestly, we spent yeah. so much time in in New York because when I was a little kid, I mean that's where we started. So mm. all the commercials when I was five, you know, everything was New York for years. And um, but anyway, so but you lived in Florida, and then when did you move to New York? Well, I so I grew up in Jacksonville, Florida, and then okay. I went to college in Virginia. Okay. And then I sort of worked my way up the coast. And I went to grad school in New York. And I, I actually started grad school September 1st, sorry, September 10th of 2001. Wow. Wow. So you actually have an education. Wait a Unlike minute. Unlike the three of us. Yeah. 
I'm just kidding. Unless us you know. delinquents. Yeah. <laughs> no, I did two years at USC. I did, I did too. I we went together. We went together. That was kind of super cool. How'd that go? It was kind of fun. It was fun. It was fun. We were in film school together, and then yeah. I realized- Did you guys take an art class? We took an art class. Oh, yeah. New you came home, and you were like- Showing off the yeah. art class. I was just like- I, it was Tell us about to, this, Joe. It was very- str- um, First of all, and Matt and I joked I would walk in the kitchen, and they were both doodling all night. No, we had to. It was a project. We had to draw this guy, and he was- he gets up there and he, you know, he goes full nude, and and he's sitting on this like it's kind of art, raised table guys. that's spinning. Oh. Yeah, so you oh. you got a you got a you got <laughs> a picture. art or a club. I don't know. Yeah, yeah it was very strange. Very and he strange. would just come around and be like, and there's his stuff oh again, gosh. and it would go away, and there's his stuff. The thing that Matt and I were commenting on is like, I don't know, if you're gonna if you're gonna sign up to be like a nude. Wait, it's true. This was nude, very awkward. A nude person of you know interest where people are going to be painting or drawing you. We were doing um, uh, charcoal drawings. Yep, that's right. Um, yeah, and so we had to do the shading. It wasn't much to shade. That's all I'm going to say. I know. This is really an odd Do you conversation have those, here. those doodles? I think our mom does. She keeps everything. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. That's, that's a good they one were, they were like no, they, they, were, they were like semester projects. Like yeah, This was like were. the big this thing. This was. We yeah. had to take three weeks. We got notes on this. Oh, yeah. He was our art teacher. She was giving us instructions. A little more shading. And we were like. Oh. So wait, this man was rotating around your class yeah. for three weeks? Yes. Like yes. on a rotisserie. He I came in. I don't understand. He came in three straight weeks. Yeah. He did for our art class. Oh, yeah. Three straight weeks. Yeah. Well, we started out. We literally started out with a piece of fruit. Right. On right. the table. Right. Shut up. And then, no, no joke, I'm not wait. kidding. And after no six months, the fruit became a, a full nude man. Nude man. Yes. I'm not Voila. kidding. That was our semester project. That's really and we odd, didn't know. We were guys. thinking, oh, we're going to do nudes at the end. This could yeah. be interesting. It's interesting. <laughs> I mean, honestly, it's interesting. No, because it was great. And this guy walks in and we're like, is he introducing the person or uh, what's happening? Exactly. And he's like, it's me. We're I'm like, the nude. Oh, no. Why? I wonder how often he would get that where Probably, he had to explain. Well, no, I'm not just taking off my clothes <laughs> because I feel free. I'm you're gonna you're gonna sketch me. I mean, it was really interesting. Was, I mean, I guess it was, it was challenging in a way because there was a lot of stuff to just kind of figure out how to place. But a lot of I shading. Know. I feel yeah. like you two yeah. guys are the only Nimrods that felt this way and everyone else no, was No, no, no. Actually, we were keeping it together. Uh, we actually, most were, of the people female were, oh, were, students were- Always were, blame the girls. They were they the were most- not, No! The actually, most, it's, yeah, it's true. You know what's so funny? I personally am always outnumbered because I live- I, oh, I yeah. have three daughters, right? Mm. And I live in a house full of women. I, we, you know, our mom was a very strong force in our lives, so- I was, uh, my whole youth, I was, we were out, you know, the guys outnumbered. Then my whole adult life, I've been outnumbered. It's like your penance. It is. <laughs> so this is very interesting because it's very rarely this. So we're not ganging up or anything like that, but it's very interesting. <laughs> no, but I mean, no, but you're like- ganging up on Andy. No, on. You no, know, but you're like, no, sorry, Emily, sorry for we my brothers. We actually always do, kind of. Sorry for my brothers. Well, they they keep apologizing. <laughs> we're talking about an innocent story about our class. Some frumpy nude man. Because it, we start with just... talking about Andy taking off his shirt, then we go to nude models. Yeah. What? I mean, where do we go from here? Well, there's so, so many places to go. Stop. Let's go back to you, because that's probably going to be a lot more interesting for everybody listening. It's true. Yeah. So you, being educated, unlike us, clearly, no, but so even though education was paramount in our lives we you know you get to halfway through school and it was weird because we were in film school and like i was directing and we were doing things and we couldn't do anything in film school well so and that's stuff you weird. sort of learn by so doing. much better it really yeah. is it really is it's a double-edged sword and i've always actually thought about this and i kind of want to bring it up because our film advisor in the school mm -hmm. remember we had to go shoot a movie in yeah. australia yeah and we were like, what do we do here? This is going to completely take us out. Should we go? Should we finish this semester? And he basically said, look, guys, if, if doing is always going to teach you more yeah. than actually being in school. Yeah. And the problem is, though, is that I never went back. Yeah, yeah. right, right. We never. And that I have a little bit of a regret about Me too. because Me I too. didn't I didn't get to develop the I feel like when you go to a, a specialized school, it's about the community and growing up because some of those people in our class. You oh, know, went on to, to become things. successful filmmakers, and it would have been nice to kind of be a part of that group. Yep, yeah. it would be nice to call them up and ask for a favor. Yeah, every now I mean, and a few then. of our classmates were yeah. Spielberg, Howard. You might have heard <laughs> no, of them. No, no, I'm kidding. No. <laughs> when did you go? No, oh, no, no. Bob Spielberg. <laughs> oh, heard of him. yes, we're 75 years old. Um, no, but it was uh, anyway. It was fun. But you are highly educated. No, uh, oh, did geez. I read this correctly? That you worked or you interned at the State Department. Is that true or no? Yes, that is true. Okay, that's bizarre. Well, How okay. did that happen? So I I thought I was going to go into the Foreign Service. I was really okay. interested in foreign affairs and international mm. studies and government and all that. And wow. so in college, I majored in Middle Eastern studies because it was an interdisciplinary of, like, of all those things. That's wow. so interesting. And it seemed like maybe there were a few things going on in the... Middle East. So yeah, well, I was going to say good yes. Place to focus. <laughs> well, so my whole time in undergrad, I was I was sort of split between my major and hanging out in the drama department because mm. UVA had a fantastic drama department that 
did not look down on you if you weren't majoring, which was nice. That's mm. cool. Yeah. That's um, actually really cool. So, and I, I loved performing, but I just didn't, I don't know, I didn't know yet that it was what I wanted to do and maybe what I was being called to do above anything else. So yep. it was nice not to focus completely on it, but then that was also why I decided to go to grad school because I, I knew enough to know that I certainly could not get by just on my instincts. Um, I had a couple of roles that made me go, wait, I have no idea what I'm doing. So uh, <laughs> I still and feel I, that I continue. way. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, it's not like that goes away. No. Um, no. But I wanted to have a more focused um, look at it and go to conservatory. And um, Where did you end up doing doing that? I was at NYU. NYU. Yeah. And oh, that's cool. Since I... <laughs> <laughs> and where's that? Okay. Yeah. NYU. Uh, yes. <laughs> NYU? Yeah, yeah. Soup du jour. I'll NYU. have that. Yeah. Mm, sounds I good. I know. <laughs> and it was fantastic, but also because I was coming straight out of undergrad, having gone to school my entire life and having this very like ac academic, get it right mindset, there was so much that just didn't sink in. Yeah. you know. And I had classmates who had been out trying to work and they knew so much more specifically what they wanted out of it. Mm. And I don't regret going when I went but it was you know yeah. i was trying so hard to get it right and they yeah. totally called me out on that isn't that funny yeah, yeah. Well, well there is because you realize there really is no right it's like no. the right is interpretation like with what we do it literally is all interpretation that's why you could have the same line have 12 different people read it and every different reading could have an intention that's completely different yeah. And there's one person that just got it really, like that one is by far the most interesting interpretation of that. Mm -hmm. well, These seven people did it exactly the same as you'd expect. These people went really weird and messed it up. And this person hit the sweet spot. And that's, that's you're right. So it's, it's weird because there really is no right or wrong answer a lot of the time. Yeah. There is principle and things and theory and these kind of things, but there's no actual right or wrong answer. I, I, no, life is completely irrational. So when you try to rationalize a performance, that's t sometimes where you can go really wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because, in fact, sometimes the more irrational you are, the more standout you are. And I heard another really interesting thing <clears throat> that I never really thought about, and it seems so simple, I can't believe I never thought about it, that when you try to, as an actor, you get off course. When you try to cry, you're forcing a... Oh, geez, yeah. Right? Okay, done. But, but really, in life, you try not to. Yeah, so exactly. that's what you have to do. You try not to make someone laugh, but then they laugh. You know, that's always the best laugh. Or well, when you try to, it's, an, it's you know, you're pushing. You're I find it much more enjoyable it. to watch when people are crying and I, I see them trying to fight their tears. Exactly. I think it's yeah. so, like, you know, it's like, blah, blah, blah. It's like, oh, my. It almost takes me out of it when they're just sobbing. You know, I almost like it when they're, like, when they're, like, restrained. <laughs> no compassion. I have so a I ton of compassion. Yeah. Yeah. I have a ton of yeah. compassion. Yeah. But it's, suck it up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what are you suck crying it up, for? <laughs> like, yeah. Suck it's it. It's so true, it. though, because Honestly. we want to be, it, 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 the, there reaches a point, I think, when you're watching it where if you feel like, it's too much about that actor's experience exactly. and them being satisfied with how they feel. You don't feel like you're a part of it. Exactly. And it's supposed to be this community event. That so internal true. fight, especially when it comes to emotion, that restraint where you don't want to let it go, you don't want to be vulnerable, but you can't help it. Like yeah. that to me is where, like you said, you end up rooting for that person. Yeah. Whereas if it's all about them and their plethora of tears, I mean, halfway through it, I'm like, wow, this guy's crying like crazy. He's just he's a crying you, mess. You see your friend afterwards and you go, wow, you you worked really hard. Yes. You worked so hard on Way that. Way to go in the tears, yeah. Tom. No, <laughs> <laughs> I was kidding. No. But uh, so, all right. So you went to NYU and then how did it break into, like, where did you get your start? Like, how did it, after that, I mean, you, you get thrown out into the world. It's like, okay. Yeah, yeah, you do. Here we go. Oh, my gosh. I'm back. It was yeah. such a shock because I had right. been in school all my life. Right. Um, it was great, though, to be in New York and to have been, you know, getting to know the city while I was in school. That made it slightly less daunting. For sure. Um, and Mike, you were talking about the community aspect of of learning and, and school. Yeah. And as, as I said, I started school on September 10th of 2001. Hmm. So my class wow. bonded wow. very quickly. Oh, yeah. Wow. Um, we really needed each other. And it 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 also really solidified for all of us, you know, it made us question everything. And so it made us really state for ourselves why this felt important to us and what kind of storytelling we wanted to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I was so in love with theater and I thought that was all I wanted mm. to do um, <clears throat> because I love the live audience and I love the rehearsal yeah. process. And I love how how intricately you can get to know a piece and a character um, I've never done a long run of anything, so, you know, I I don't think I would like that aspect of theater. But I quickly yeah. learned that 
you can't really make much of a living just doing theater. No. I have so much. Res- I have so much respect for 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 theater lifers because oh, I man. did one stint and it was in Chicago, which is you know, which is great. It was musical, but what did you do? I played Billy Flynn. But yeah, nice. but it was great, and we did it for like you know ten weeks. It was awesome, and that's plenty, right? I was ten weeks. Ex- week two, I was like, oh my god. Yeah, it's my shows. Yeah. It's intense. The same really thing. Intense. It's like a marathon. I don't care about expensive things. I don't care about my, oh my God, this is the, way. and these people just, 52 weeks. I know. I mean, they take yeah. a week off. It's incredible. I'm like, this is crazy. It's and so they've crazy. done it for years and yeah. years and yeah. years. And I'm just like, wow, you guys are unbelievable. The live audience element is the best. I feel like mm. what makes television, especially the art form that we all had a lot of success in and were blessed to work in a lot, which is the half hour comedy, yeah. is such an amazing experience because that is the the I think the essence of theater. But the cool thing about it is you do all that rehearsal, you do you have the live audience, you kick, you kick ass, you do it, and then next week it's a whole new experience. Yeah. Fresh. You get to do it with a new script, new moments. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's like theater but just refreshes itself every 7 days. And well, to me, that was such a sweet spot because you get all that great stuff at theater, but the monotony is yeah. not the same. And which... you also, I've only done one sitcom, but I loved it so much because it's like theater with a bonus because mm-hmm. you get, you you perform the scene, you perform the line, and then if they want to tweak it to make it even better, yeah. you get a do-over. You do. And that's awesome. And they it throw is. you lines. Like, nothing better than those live audience shows where, you know, on the shows that we would do, we would always bring in our, like, our, like, um our film night A-list crew, you know, like, of, like, writers. And they would come in just for show night, the yeah. punch-up guys. Mm. And the guys, like, we had great guys on s- some of the shows, like Ed Driscoll and these guys who, you know, won e- Emmys working with Leno and, and and you know, amazing guys. Anyway, they would they would come in and they would, like, throw out these lines. And you'd be like, Ank! and you'd crush the next pass through yeah. the scene. They yeah. gave you these two or three zingers and they were just incredible. And like you said, to perfect something that you'd spent all week working on and was already pretty good just felt really great. You yeah. don't, you know, you, whereas theater, it's one, I mean, you're done. Like, mm-hmm. that's it, you know, yeah. and yeah. It was really cool, that element. No, it, it it was it was an amazing experience. So, all right, so you thought you were going to do theater. That's where mm-hmm. you thought you were going to go. And then, like, life, obviously, everything just sort of doesn't yeah. go Yeah. So I, I, I did start auditioning for some TV stuff, and I was like, all right, I'll be open to this. I also thought I was only ever going to stay in New York because I love New York City. Right. Mm. Um, and my first TV gig was on a, a soap opera, which was hilarious. Mm. And I had That's to say— That's good training for memorization. Oh, my gosh, it? yeah. And for— um, keeping a straight face when you have to say ridiculous dialogue. I know. Yeah. Um, some of my most challenging moments, I think we're on that. My aunt's brother's mother did what? And you have to keep a straight face. Yeah, Fuzzy Wuzzy was oh, a woman. Yeah. <laughs> whatever. I don't know whatever the words You've are. You've seen my work. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, how so- am I hearing you? I'm deaf. But you are, because it's daytime. No good. Sorry. But I'm my twin. Right, right. Oh, my, I know. Oh, right. Yeah. My twin that I'm playing. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> yeah. Evil twin. And it's like two episodes a day, right? Yeah. Shoot. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I got pages. so much respect for those actors, because there's, there's no there's no do-overs in that. Wow. And if you, like, start to flub up a scene, a lot of the time, you just got to make it work. Cause Don't they have cue cards, too, go... sometimes, that you could refer to if you need them or no? I remember. I, I remember some of my friends that did it said- I wouldn't yeah, doubt it. Some of the big stuff they put on cards, but, yeah. like- you're in it, and this person's off book, and and they've changed the line already, so that yeah. cue card's completely useless. So you're trying to somewhat read it, but you oh know, boy, yes, yeah, nightmare. It's like SNL. Cut. Moving on. But I thought we were shooting. We were shooting. Wasn't that rehearsal? It was rehearsal. They're not laughing at right. you, exactly. but they probably are. Exactly. They right. Are. It's SNL with no laughs. Yeah. <laughs> <Whee>! <laughs> yeah you know. So all right. So you did that. Wow. I did that. Um, but it was fun. I I liked the I liked the the challenge of acting for the camera, and I you know I was just I've always been curious and I've always wanted to try new things and I feel like I never had a a like set plan of like I want to get to this point I was just I love acting and I've always been open to what comes my way so um I started doing more tv but was still heavily in theater and then at some point that changed and at some point I also started I used to say I had an open relationship with New York and LA because nice. mm. I refused to commit to either perfect um but at some point New York just stopped giving me as much Love and so I found myself in LA. New York will do that to you. Yeah, I feel like that. New York loves you and then it turns its back on yeah. you. It might take you back, but it, for a while it just refuses you. <laughs> it's like, hello, New York. Like who are you? 
Although I got to be honest, whenever it's I go, like Shmi, Shmi, you look at Shmi. Yeah, Shmi will New York not. York is a French bulldog. He, yeah, yeah, it is. Shmi sometimes he's all over you. He loves you. He does all these things. Other times he literally he you know he hears you. He gives you one piece oh, of yeah. one of his eyes as just a recognition that you're alive, but just doesn't want to respond at all to you yeah. or give you any sort of attention. That's New York. Although when I when I go back to New York, I don't know. Maybe it's because we've been here for so long. Yeah. When I go back to New York, I feel like um. I don't know, I feel like the people are more, even though they're harsher, they're, I don't know, they're more open. Like, they're more like, hey, how you doing? You know, well, it's I like, just think they're more genuine. They're more genuine. That way, yeah. yeah like, they don't have time. Yeah. For the, time. For the crap. But yeah. like here, it's like, I don't know, I, I, everybody's so in their own little box. And here, everyone's, little everyone's callous to the ulterior motive, right? There's, uh, we're expecting it, so oh, that's yeah. all that comes into- It's like into, we don't trust the exactly, sunshine. Like, why, exactly right. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's too nice. You oh, yeah. know, yeah. nothing's this nice. I, I always say that, oh, Darn it, it's sunny again. Yeah. Like, oh, oh, boy. Oh. Another 70 degree week. Yeah. I know. I've heard people complaining about that. Perfect. I literally, weather. it makes Funny. me irate. Like, oh, this weather, it's so consistent. It's like, get out. Yeah. <laughs> we we could yeah. afford to lose yeah. a few people. I, you know. Oh, yes. Have you been on the 405? Where are they all from? What are <laughs> all these people? <laughs> uh, have, you, have you heard that analogy that they took the U.S.? And they, they, you know, if this is the East Coast, they they raised the East Coast up, and everybody that wasn't holding on or had themselves grounded in reality oh, fell funny. to the West Coast. Oh, that's funny. I've not heard like, that, yeah. but I love that. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's just, good. I've heard that before. Wow, yeah. I like that. Whoever said that was pretty smart. That's yeah. funny. That's but that, that is so true, though, about New York. I love going back to the city. I me love too. Yeah, me, too. Well, me too. I love being there now that I don't have to live there full time. Right. Yeah. Um, and I I went back there for two years when my husband and I got married. But I was still traveling a lot. But I, I do love that as soon as I touch down in that city, I feel like I'm surrounded by so many people doing so many interesting things. Yes. And it's refreshing because it it reminds me that I'm not that important in a good way. Like, yes, not, for not, sure. you know, self-deprecating sure. or anything. Just like, oh, yeah, there's a lot of people doing interesting things. Yeah. And here, I think, like you said, it's easy to like get in your own bubble and just feel like everything is so important. Yeah, I know. I know. And so now I love New York and the holidays and stuff. Yeah. We always did the... We did a lot of the Macy's Day parades and stuff, you know, and going back there and doing those parades and just, man, that that time of year, such incredible memories, you know. We are, our whole family's on the East Coast, so, except mm -hmm. for, you know, obviously our parents, we moved out here, but everybody else is back there, so. Yeah. It does hold a near and dear place in our hearts as well. So you went, so, all right, so you left New York, came out to LA, mm -hmm. right? Is that what happened? And did TV bring you out here? Is that kind of what did it, or did you just go, I, I gotta try LA, see if that works? Do you remember the no. pilot seasons and all that? That, well, that was what, what, First okay. brought me okay. out. Okay. Yeah, those are over. I <laughs> know. Yeah. Really no pilot seasons anymore. No. Anyway. That was such the thing. I mean, like hundreds of thousands of people would flock to California yeah. from the there East was Coast like for a a pilot time season. When you really yep. had to be had to be here. Was in it LA. Oakwood Apartments? Remember Oakwood Apartments? Oh my yeah. gosh. It'd be a ghost Burbank. town, but come January, baby. That was like it was popping. Mall of America. Mm -hmm. It really it was, was like there were thousands yeah. of so people. true. I'm gonna be so an true. actor. It's like, oh God. All right. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Anyway. Well, that was me. <laughs> uh, I know. I, I know. I, I got my headshot and my resume. Oh my gosh, what remember this? black and white headshots? Oh, yes. Yeah. Wait a minute. I'm your uh, different yeah. looks. I've been doing you this go so long. Lots of looks. When when we were when I was five, if the black and white wasn't good enough, they'd take a Polaroid. Oh. Of you oh, when right. you got to the audition. That's right, I remember that. And they'd staple that to your resume. Oh yeah, I remember that. And then that would go up. Remember that? And they oh, tack yeah. it up on the wall. I know. And the cast lady would come out and go. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know why you're like. like they staple it to your chest. Yeah, what? right. It was here. the '80s. They didn't care. There's no head. child labor laws chest. back no, then. And they come out and be like, "Okay, Work, uh, kid. Joey Lawrence, you're up, you know, off my Polaroid that they I just know. took of me." I know. Yes, I remember. But yes, black and white headshots. Oh yeah, everybody had those. Black and white was the thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. You didn't yeah, have HD. Yeah, yeah. You couldn't smooth anything out. So black and white, everybody looked a little better. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> they, they just did. Color was harsh, you know, if you didn't have it lit right. I mean, for, you know. It's so true. Definitely. Yeah. Black mm. and white was, you know, more graceful. That's why black and white, you look at look at some of those old movies, you're like, everybody's yeah. skin is so They're beautiful. Beautiful. Look at this mm. porcelain skin. Yeah. Not, a, not a one wrinkle. But it's because, you know, you can't see anything. Yeah. Have you ever seen, there's a, I think it's an Instagram account called uh, called History Colored. And they yes. take black and white pictures uh, and they color cool. them in. Oh my God. They do like so New York cool. 1950s, yeah, it's really cool. right? And they I think have, in the 40s. Uh, I 30s. I've seen uh, London, like 1899 video Great. that yeah. they have. Original oh. video footage. And they colorize it. And you're just like, it's it's wild, man. It's bizarre. It, it is. is crazy to think that like 110 years ago, like 120 years ago, like it was a whole different world. I mean, literally. 
Yeah. And I feel like we've gone into hyperdrive ever since 06 and the iPhone and the super net and social media. That's really, you know, we talk about all the, the time. Interweb. But we, yeah, the interweb. <laughs> but I feel like I feel like for years and years and years, even with like my 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 older two daughters, you know, because um, they were born in uh, 06 and 10, right? Wow. And you think about like, it was even, I was even still able to say, you know, just like my parents say like, hey, listen, you know, things are not like they used to be. But they kind of were. It's like they weren't, but they were. Because even in the eighties and nineties, like yeah, sure, now we you got forty technology. channels instead of four, right? But right, yeah. you know, right, it's right, not, right. Like so was, in that way, things were not. It was the same. expanding, but it wasn't a drastic change. Exactly. Now, the way we consume, how we consume, what it, it's everything is completely different than how even we grew up. I mean, yeah. it's it's so vastly different, you know. And I have a I have a year old, and that. I don't know oh, what wow. she's going to do. I mean, it's going to be a whole different... Flying I mean, cars does and she, robots. Has she, does she have um, experience with... She has hands? She has hands. Yeah. You hold up. Does she have... She have webbed fingers? Yeah. <laughs> hands? So I'm thinking we get her in swimming. She born what? with extra large thumbs because of all the <laughs> flipping? She hasn't done anything. No, I mean, yet. like, does, does she interact extra with the screen, with an problems. iPhone, with an iPad? No. Okay, that's good. A lot we of people, a lot of people I'm not do. Doing that. Yeah, we're, Joe, I'm, we're trying no, to. Hold you off can't on have that. newborns look at screens. Well, no, no, no. Hold on, wait. No, no. There's this whole debate right now I because, as you see with uh, Elon's Neuralink and chipping and things like that, they're chipping babies. Well, no, no, wait. But here's here's where it's going. You you could Matt, see that. No, you can. You can really see the okay. the evolution of this and where it's going. Is parents are going to be forced with confronting, okay, do I allow my child to get into technology at a very early age or do I not? But if I if I don't, how far are they going to be behind all the other kids that were? Right. And but that's then the if same I thing. do, how does that change their brain development? Well, that's... Because they've, I mean, that's, they've that's, said that's, that there's so many huge alterations uh, that happen. Uh, that's the thing. Unfortunately, and it really went into high gear with COVID, but, you know, it really fundamentally changed the school system too. Mm. Uh, not... In a good way, obviously, a horrible way, actually. But everything went online, everything. And well, now yeah. my my eighth grader, right, Libby, is everything is on. I mean, there's not one piece of paper. Everything is through the computer. Everything is through every assignment. I'm like, there's not one thing that you can just tangibly touch and read and yeah. learn. You've lost yeah. the ability to capitalize on other senses now, right? Because it wasn't yeah. just... I remember, like, you get the book. It's opening the book. It's touching the page. It's seeing the words. It's smell the then book. Re exactly. Yeah. Rewriting the, the words. Sure, I didn't even think about smell. that. Rewriting yeah. the words, you know, that and, and, and that experience. And all of it's gone. It's now this and this. Everything is uploaded. They click buttons. Every I mean, it's like, what? Yeah. Horrible. I think it's the process of learning. Because the way well, that you learn. The, that's the debate. Teaches you. I mean, I, there's, do you, um, do you ever read Malcolm Gladwell? Oof. We don't read. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. What if I was like this? We read scripts. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. No, no, go ahead. Imagine. Yeah. I, I feel like his most it's famous a little light book reading. is, is uh, The Tipping Point. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I know 100%. the book. Yes, I've so not, not read it, though. He wrote this book called um, David and Goliath hmm. that talks about how perceived um, shortcomings and disabilities can actually help people become more... Well, Sorry, I was going to say more powerful, but which is the case in some instances, but become they become more resourceful. So, like he, one of the things that he points out is that there's a number of Fortune 500 CEOs who grew up um, dyslexic, mm -hmm. and because mm -hmm. of the creativity they had to show in trying to overcome that learning uh, disability, yep. they became these fantastic leaders, and they're well equipped mm. to run companies, and they think of ideas that nobody else would think of. Yeah. So. I mean, you know, I this is a, a very shallow uh, comparison to what you're talking about with learning in school. But I think that way sometimes about learning scripts. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what if all the information would just be downloaded in my head? Mm -hmm. But I have to admit that the process of trying to figure out, like, it's mm -hmm. only through trying to figure out why a character says what they say and looking at how the scene fits together that I then can commit it to memory. And so I'm kind mm -hmm. of glad I don't have a photographic memory, although I've never... You know, I've never tried it. It might be kind of nice. And no, that, I, that, that journey can lead to new discoveries within that you probably wouldn't get if it was just a quick yeah. download. Like, Ch why do I keep remembering yeah. this wrong? Challenges, oh, yeah. challenges are part of life. You need challenges. You need tough times. You need moments where you don't know what's going on. You need setbacks. You need mm -hmm. all of these things in order to become a successful person. To your point, those challenges that those CEOs had to go through you know, learning through their challenges and, and, and learning disabilities and stuff, it, 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 it honed their senses. They became better at these things and then excelled. 
And yeah. I feel like so many times we just constantly want to make it easier and easier and easier and easier. And it's a it, it's much to the detriment, especially yeah. for young people, how easy and accessible things are today. We even talk about it. We talk about it all the time. Like there was something about doing a job or whatever. When we were kids, you know, we do and we'd save up our money and stuff or whatever it was, you know, because we had we we never got to spend any of the money that we made like working. So we would have like allowance from mm. doing chores, right? Because my parents were like that, which was great. And we would save up and we would get in the car and you'd go to the music store and you'd pick out the things you wanted. Yes. And, but that, it was, I mean, think about it today. You just go, oh, this song's cool. You don't have to pay for it. You just yeah. literally download. There is no, there is no work that goes into that reward, right? When you get rewards for no work, it creates a mentality. It creates a path way to just well, really not knowing how to do things, actually. And that's well, not good. I, I, discipline is the best self-love, right? Because if you're putting things off and you understand what it takes to to get something, yeah. you know, then you're going to really be more in tune with who you are and you're going to give yourself, you know, better, I don't know, you know, a better understanding of what it really is. So I, agree. I don't know, you know, I agree. So, I think there's a healthy integration and it's always going to be like anything in moderation. You use it, moderation. use it, use it to, to mold the strength and then don't use it to develop the proper. <clears throat> I just don't see it going that way. I know. Well, I we have an innate, we have a, a an ability sometimes to really not have the forest for the trees. You know that old expression, like see where it's going. Like we almost know yeah. where, but we, we just decide to ignore it. So it's like, no, this is a great technology. Blindly, just instead of going, wait a minute, what have we done here? We gotta figure this out. Let's figure out a blueprint before we just release it. You know, it's or gonna... we see the ease that it produces. There you go. And we see like uh, instant you know, gratification from yeah. it. Yeah, you know? and we go, oh, that's great, but we don't we get addicted really to it. see what that costs us. Comfort is is there's no there's sometimes. no growth in yeah, comfort. Yeah, there's very little growth in comfort. You know, always just adventure fact, over. Comfort. Arguably, as a as a as a human race, as, as firstly, especially as a nation here, our challenges and difficulties propelled us to our greatest moments. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> the trials and the tribulations are what sharpen and create the person that you, you are. That's it. just the way it is. Go ahead, Andy. You want to say something? Well, no. I just have I have I have questions about. I'm fanboying over the Mandalorian. So I oh, oh, do it. Yeah, yeah, do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. On there. Oh, I well, want to show you my T-shirt. I've got a Jedi yeah. on vacation. Yeah. T-shirt. Wow, <laughs> Jedi on nice. <laughs> What makes that a Jedi shirt? I don't know. I don't know, I don't know why. I yeah, Jedi? just because it vacation. says Jedi. I've worn it so much; it has a hole. Surfers. Yeah, it's got surfers. I don't know if that's an authentic Star Wars, but it just says Jedi. Yeah, yeah. He made an attempt. What did you do? I am up here, man. It's all oh, in the mind. God. I'm on a mental trip with this thing. Man. Yeah. No, I really was. I want to know about. I want. I just have so many questions about your experience. On well, that. what we were just talking about makes me think. One of the reasons I freaking love this character that I get to play so much is that she's she's so much smarter and wiser and more patient than I am. And she says we all begin as raw ore. Um, I'm going to paraphrase it, but we're we're forged in the fire. Our, our difficulties and our so hardships cool. yeah. so cool. make us who we are. How yeah. cool is that? She's a smart lady. It's so badass. You get to play such an iconic character oh, in gosh. in such an awesome franchise. I mean, what what an I mean, how much I have? Weird. I want to. Okay, my first. I have a couple questions. What is like? What is the the experience of the? I guess you'd call it a volume. What the do volume, you? What yeah. do you? What is? How much is real? How well, much is not? Explain what the volume is first of all, because you say volume that, is think, the space that you, you would go. you would. It's this new. It's a, it's kind of the combination of old school filming and and new technology to where you know it's where the performance happens, but it's a it's not a stage. It's now a volume because your com- the convergence of technology has forced it to evolve beyond just a stage. Maybe um, it's like a, wrap you a in wrap a wrap around yeah. yeah screen and where it would have been green screen or blue screen, yeah. they actually project so cool. the world, which is, as an actor, wow. is so oh, cool. that's brilliant. Way better than green screen. Nothing that was, yes. nothing is that worse was terrible. Than, there's I the, hated that yeah, process. Yeah, here's the, here's the dinosaur. I'm like, ah, you know. Yeah. The, I mean, or it's like a, a big green box that is the mountain that you're climbing, and you're like, oh, oh no. this is yeah. awful. You know, it's awful. That's anyway. so freaking cool. Yeah. It is amazing, because there, there have been times when I've walked onto the set, and, like, I remember this, um, in season three, there was a set that was in a cave, and I walked into the stage and I truly could not tell where like the practical elements that no. they that had built what? and the volume began. Come on. That's so cool. That's so crazy. Unreal. Yeah. That is so cool, man. You know, wow. I, I when when you're working on something like that and you have the the caliber of people that you're working with, right? We often yeah. talk about this. Like yeah. I've been doing this 43 years, you know, and and we work with some good people, but like there are so many people that I have 
yet to work with where I walk onto a stage and I'm like, I can't believe like John Favreau. I mean, you know, like that would, first of all, I'm a huge fan of what Favreau does. I love his tone. He always finds the perfect tone no matter what yeah. he's working on, whether it's Elf, whether it's, you know. Whether it, it's Swingers. Whether, whether it's, it's Iron or, Man. Yeah, whatever it is. I mean, yeah. he, he basically invented the tone for Marvel, in my opinion. Literally created I it. I think you're right. There, there had been, in my opinion, in the Star Wars franchise, Ever since the original three, I mean, there things are good, but it I just think, hasn't no, ever reached the no, no, level. The Mandalorian, but, I think, but saved that. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was I my really point. do. Yeah. So like, now I was come even up, like no, on the fence. I was like, really? That and then was my first Mandalorian thing. came out, and it was like, oh, so my, I was we, there waiting for so every episode. Me I mean, yeah. that very rarely when, does it get me like that. When you that, first yeah. heard of it, nobody knew what to expect because it had come out of the Disney Plus thing, and you're just like, yeah, God, I hope they don't ruin this. Well, nobody knew it. Like I remember when I when I was auditioning for it. Um, and it just came along. Like you know, people will say, like, how'd you decide to be in Star Wars? And right. Like, yeah. Yeah. No, right. Okay. right. Yeah. I know. Right. Yeah. I know. Um, I was course. sitting there going, one day I'd yeah. like to. I'd I like called to my be agent a, yeah. and said, "Listen, Star Wars. Miller, get me in Star Wars." <laughs> and I hung up. And, and the make next it something day I got good. It. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. make it something good. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 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 We had go. no <laughs> idea though, because it like I mean, for when I got the audition, it was like maybe this is Star Wars. We're not really gonna say. And it was this interesting. Live action TV show, which had never been done in the Star Wars universe, right, for this right. new platform. Nobody knew what Disney Plus was going to yeah. be. Right. Oh my God. So, and I was, because it's such a top secret project, I knew so little about of it. I truly mm. didn't know what to expect, but I'm so glad for that because I, like, I knew I was working with incredible people. Yeah. And I wanted to do my best work. And, but I, I just worked on it like I would anything else. And it wasn't until. I was done shooting all of my work for season one that the show was even announced and that wow. whole oh like build up God. began. So I didn't have to think about any of that. That right. is so cool. It takes a lot of the pressure off. Oh my gosh, yes. Yeah. It seemed to me, another thing I was, and, and again, doing as many episodes as you've done, it's always it's always tricky when different directors come in, right? Mm -hmm. Because I always mm -hmm. felt like well, the voice, right? How, yeah, like, because all of obviously, a sudden, do they? Are you guys switch DP? Is it is it is it a whole revolve every week? Is it revolving everything, or is it a two same? the whole season? With they, two DPs. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. nice. That's good. So at least each director didn't bring like, their own. They fixed that person. finally, yeah. right? Yeah. But uh, I mean, was it? Did did John have his footprint on? Oh yes. that first season. Okay. Yes, and he. Man, I, I mean, I, I truly can't say enough wonderful things about him because awesome. I it's don't know hear. how he does it. He yeah. is such a strong leader, and he, even though he didn't personally direct any of the episodes, right, right, right. I feel like the, the smartest thing that he did, which is so simple but which is so rarely done, is that he got all of the directors together, huh. and they all mm. talked through, like, what That's this so show awesome. is supposed to be. Yeah. How And he encouraged them. He, he said, you know, we chose each of you because of your unique talents. We don't want you to change your style. Mm. We don't want you to like try to fit into, I mean, there is a style for the show, but like don't try to dull what you do to fit into that. Right, right. But let's make sure we're all on the same page, telling the same story. And he does that with us as actors. We wow. have like almost every single morning on set, he is there and we talk about what we're shooting that day. What? We talk about what the story what? is. Because it's such a tech oh. heavy show, yeah. you can easily lose sight of that. Wow. Okay. And he okay. is infinitely available for questions. And he, I mean, especially at this point, for those of us who have been playing these characters for a while, he and Dave both just really trust us. That and it's a, cool, it is a discussion. Wow. You know, if there's something that doesn't feel right, we talk about it. And sometimes it changes. Sometimes we realize, oh, yeah, you're, you're smart and you're seeing the long game. And I should right. just trust what you have going on mm. here. Yeah. Wow. Um, but it is truly one of the most wonderfully collaborative environments I've ever been in. And I just feel so lucky that it is, that it's so enjoyable to actually do. And it turns out it's really good. Well, it's isn't so that good. unbelievable? And we so talk amazing. about that all the time. Like it, 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 you know, it's, it must feel so good to do something that is so good and also feel so good. Cause so many times I'm sure you've had experiences where you think, First of all, so many times you're doing something and you're like, oh my God, this is a nightmare. This is a nightmare. It always starts out hot. I you're hope nobody feeling, sees this. Well, it starts out you're feeling good and right. then like by like the third day or like you're maybe like, week oh, two, you're like, oh wreck. my God. Yeah. Oh, this, this is going to go away. This is yeah. my nightmare. Yep. And then you just get like tunnel vision. Yep. You're like, I'm going to focus through it. on my work. Yeah. Yeah. Get through it. Yep. Focus on my work. Yep. You're going to be fine. Yep. yep. But it's a nightmare. Yeah. And then other times, like you said, you think it's going to be great and then you watch the end product and it's not great. Yeah. You're like, wow, they ruined that. That was amazing. How did this get ruined? Yep. And but but to work on something you be so proud of you watch this that, and it's, that it exudes it's like, such this is so good well and it's fun to watch too because it's i know great. so little about what overall is going wow. on they keep that it pretty is tight so late, huh? cool 
Do I get you, to watch it as a fan? Are That's your so cool. are your props all like are they weighted or are they just fake, fake, fake? Yes, to both. Okay. So I like for my Various. hammer, I have four different hammers okay. that they give me. Um, and one of them, which they love to shoot the most because it's the most beautiful, is about twenty pounds. Oh wow. my and goodness! And it's titanium, and I can't do anything with it. Holy like God. even when I'm standing there, just holding it in my hand, there wow. was a scene where I was standing for a long time holding the hammer. And my gloves were too smooth, and so it just kept like sliding no out of my way. hand, and they had to tape it to my hand. And then the other end of the spectrum is I have one that is mostly foam, and so that's used for fight scenes and stuff. Mm. And then the two, there's, I'm told, I didn't even know there were two in between. Our props guy Josh told me that there are. I thought there was just one that was wow. in between that I used for actual hammering mm. and stuff. The so the cool. now I remember when Matt did something so long ago. He did something called Superhuman Samurai Cyberscribe, where he paid, played like a character. And I was a kid, and it always it always was uh, funny to me when he wore the like it was a character that was a normal guy, and then he wore a suit. When he wore the suit, it was never him. It was never. all ever. Oh. It was always to some stunt guy, yeah, and he always. always just did voiceover and stuff. And I was curious how much of this I'm is in that suit. Always, huh? Wow. I Ooh. I mean, I wish I could say I'm always in it, and I have. <laughs> Almost every time I'm like, let me just try this fight. Oh God, no, yeah. I'm not so right. sure. So you have a stunt double, obviously that yes, that does who the are be, the crazy things. Where skilled you can't get injured; arts. they don't want to ruin you for the whole season. I do. So. I mean, I try to learn all the fights, sure, but though. they but but just so that, professionalism. They don't want you're yeah, important. They won't let the, we the need, actors yeah, get you broken. Know, you sometimes. would do it, but but they they can't break you. But okay, mm -hmm. but otherwise, but yes, it's, I am in the suit. I think I'm one of the only ones that does both. Wow. Um, yeah, does Pedro, how much, what is he, is he a cool dude? Is he as cool as, as he's, he seems he's like? He's a wonderful, yeah. wonderful guy, and I actually worked with him on The Mentalist. I was about to say, I was on the, yeah. oh, hold on, I think we might have crossed paths, I was on The Mentalist. No way! Of course, of What course. did you do in I your episode? I don't, I don't, I don't, who knows, it was. You don't, don't remember. remember your no, episode? I don't remember. I mean, I was probably, <laughs> do you I, know what season it was? I did something I terrible. I was only on there for one season. I don't remember. I don't, you did something terrible. And I was at an interrogation table, probably. Gee, you that know, never happened on that show. I've done that like 800 times. I have yeah. no idea what interrogation it was. I've been in so all many All the guest spots says yeah. an actor. I'm going to go look it up now. Yeah, I know. You're I like know. always at being interrogated. Yeah, that's, that's your it. scene I in know. the episode. You've always done something bad. You're always being interrogated. I Usually know. I'm. And do you cry or not probably. cry? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Back to that. Yeah. It all comes exactly. full circle. For one ep, I'm never crying. I'm not yeah. crying for one episode. Oh, I'm not yeah. just, no. uh, <laughs> but yeah, so that's right. So the mental. So you worked with him. That's right. Wow. Yeah. And he's, I adore him. Din Djarin is a wonderful stew of. Basically, three different guys. Pedro at this point is just doing the voice. Yep. Yeah. Um, Brendan Wayne is the main guy that's in the suit, and he's uh, John Wayne's mm. grandson. Really? And, what? Yeah. Wow. How cool is that? Wow. Yeah. That I mean, that's why Mando walks a little bit like a cowboy. Wow. Which, by the way, it's I so love that brilliant. Fabro was saying it was like a, it is. It it's like, like a western. A, it's like it a totally, totally yeah. is. I mean, it, like it is. Yeah. It, anyway. Well, and that's well, they part literally. Of why they, yeah. they in season one, they literally had a standoff. Like literally, remember when he's? Yeah. Yeah. Dude. So anyway, great. Don't, and Brendan don't. is, oh, so I mean, they're they're open now about the fact that there's multiple people sure. doing it. But from the start, even when, like, they didn't really talk about it, just because, you know, you want to keep the mystery. Of course. Course. But yeah. even though he was getting no attention for it, no acclaim, like, Brendan is one of the hardest working. Hmm. Um, and, you you know, you talk about when you're, like, who who's a good example when they're number one on the call sheet. And Brendan acted like the best version of a number one on the call sheet and was putting in the time to be number one on the call sheet and for a while wasn't number one on the call sheet. And right. yeah. he is such, I, like, I just cannot praise him enough, especially because a lot of people don't know what he does. But he he's mostly in the suit. And then Latif Crowder is the badass fighting machine mm -hmm. who has been kind enough to train me cool. and wow. help me try to pick up some of the moves. Um, but the fact that the three of them can work together so well to mm. create this character is just, I mean, that's an art in and of itself. Yeah, it's, it really is. It's, really like, is. it's literally like tag team. Yeah. It's like, you know, like when you, you know, in like wrestling days when you'd had those cool tag team, I mean, everything's staged there as well, but the the tandem that would always simultaneously are relay races, you hand that baton off perfectly yeah. so that they can continue that transition is, if it's not fluent and perfect, it, it, it would create a mess and they do it seamlessly. I didn't know yeah. that there were it, as many it different Moderately versions. reflects the original Darth Vader, right? Exactly, yeah. 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 Well, and Boba Fett, there's and a Boba tradition Fett, of that yeah. in Star Wars. Mm. I did a convention, I guess, two years ago with five guys who had all played Boba Fett, and I didn't, I didn't know there were that many. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. That's so interesting. That is crazy. Speaking of convention, we're, we're going to cross paths again. 
uh, possibly, a possibly at one of these conventions coming yeah, up. Coming out. Yeah, yeah, Galaxy Con, Galaxy Con, Richmond, Virginia, or something. Yeah, I yeah. yeah, I'll be there. Yeah, yeah. April. Yeah, yeah. Right. no, March. 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 Yeah, we'll March. be there too. Yeah, we'll be yeah. There. Hey. yeah, March 15th through the yes. 17th or something, I think. Hey, yeah. hey. 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 you know, <laughs> we're going to be signing some uh, Mandalorian gear. And uh, no, you're not, Joe. Yeah, we are. No, you're not, <laughs> Joe. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm under that helmet. Hey, what are you doing Prove at my it. table? I don't want to be with those two guys. <laughs> Your table's you're welcome doing to come over anytime. Table. We, have, uh, we have a couple of mugs, and we're doing a live show from there, but we don't you have are. any. We are. Oh, yeah. that's fun. Do we you are. do that at conventions a lot? No. As a matter of fact, our... um, we've been asked for, you know, this. This we're a year old, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, we just celebrated our year. We had a Happy cake. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, yes. And, um, you know, we've been blessed. This thing has done really well, right? So people are watching it and listening to us, which we're so thankful for. So one of the things they said is you guys got to go on the road and take this on tour. So we are we are having some experimental tour dates with the pod live. Right. Um, and that is our and first that one. that is our first one. <gasps> oh. Yes. That's so cool. Yes. Could be you. Well, You're there that week. Yeah. Stop by. If you want to come stop on by. by. Come crash it. Yeah. Even if you don't well, invite me, I'm no, going to come honestly, crash no, it. Honestly, totally we're going to be having uh, that that weekend. We're going to be having, I think, just kind of like a lot of people stopping by. Cool. Yeah. Um, so if you'd love to stop by, I'm sure we could. I would uh, absolutely yeah. love we could, to. We could hunt you down and figure it out. Even if Shmi's not there, will Shmi be there? No. Oh, no, I don't no, know on this one. No. He does come sometimes, but you know. Yes. It really depends. It depends. Definitely depends. But anyway, that will be fun. So not as much fun as working on The Mandalorian, but it will be fun. <laughs> Different kind of fun. A yeah, close yeah. second. You know, yeah. Mandalorian yeah. or a live pod. Oh, God. Let me tell you. <laughs> Things are really popping in my career. Do you want me to bring bring a helmet and you can do the whole thing in a, in a helmet? Oh, my God. Oh my God. So that would be so cool. cool. It's not as fun as it sounds. No, it no. sounds no. awesome. Yeah. But, you it's know. ridiculous. You can't see anything. Anything, right? You run into stuff constantly. Is, yeah. it, yeah. is it heavy? You look so cool, no, but it's completely not, not functional. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. Oh, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Like I, I, I have said this since the beginning. I really want them to put out a bloopers reel because oh, it's like oh the three gosh. stooges. So great. That would be unbelievable. Oh my like, god! It'd be people are constantly bonking helmets and tripping on things. <laughs> un- How's the baby Yoda? With these dignified How? characters. It's so. Oh, I would funny. love baby that. Yoda. Grogu. I would love the baby Grogu. baby Yoda. Yeah, man. Grogu. Grogu. Yeah. Great. I mean, just, you know, for a while, what a crazy we were ex- told officially. Do not call him Baby Yoda. He is Grogu. Uh, not right, in any right. interviews. Yeah. Do not say that word. Whoops. And then at some point, they just gave up. Just they gave were like, up. Meh. yeah. And I mean, they're making the money, so mm-hmm. I don't True. think they care that much. I to be mean, honest, Baby Yoda. I mean, I feel like you can't, you can't capitalize on that. Yeah. Who, who doesn't love Baby Yoda? Well, that's what although he Grogu is, is it's Grogu. Well, of course, it's, it's not Yoda. Yoda. He's not Baby it's not, Yoda. Yeah, I know. It's Baby Grogu, really. I know. Yeah. Baby Grogu. Yeah. <laughs> it's so cute. It's so good. It is great. There is a. Did you experience the practical? Oh yes, Grogu, right? Yes. And it's ridiculous because you know it's a puppet <laughs> and it reduces you to complete idiocy because he's so cute. Yeah. I had lunch with him several times. You want to interact with him? <laughs> <laughs> you want a little bit of the <laughs> I Oh, the you whole don't eat? Okay. Side conversations with him. Oh, because sure. also the, the puppeteers, like, they're constantly watching and listening. <laughs> and so you might be sitting off to the side, just like, What's up, Grogu? How you doing today? And then he'll move and he'll. Oh, like, wow. <laughs> That's yeah. got to be the coolest thing ever. It's That's like adult great. Muppets. That is awesome. It is. It's like if you were literally in the Muppets movie and you were just but with adults, you could just hang out, you know? It'd be so cool. Yeah. That would yeah, be so really, cool. Really cool. What a genius stroke of, I mean, creativity. Oh my that thing, yeah. Right? Really. I Maybe mean, closer. just, mm. again, mm-hmm. literally, I mean, saved what I think, I, I think it really saved the franchise. I really yeah. do. Well, and to bring it back yet again to something we've already talked about, they, when they were first shooting it, they didn't know if they were going to use the uh, takes with the practical puppet or if they were going to CGI it. Wow. And it was um, Werner Herzog, I think. I mean, he wasn't the one that like made them make the decision, but he, he said- How do I know that name? How do you not know that name? <laughs> <laughs> he imagine- He's kind of a big deal. He's like, yeah. are you kidding me? The yeah. director and he of was lots the, and lots of he, documentaries. Oh and he was, in, yeah. he was in the show. He was the, oh the client. Yeah, 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 yeah. We yeah, do okay. need you guys to go back to yeah, school. Yeah, I got it now. Yeah, but he yeah. told them, he, he said, you are cowards if you don't use the the puppet. That is great. awesome. Yeah. That is so good. And I do think it would have been so different. It would have been. No. Oh, my God. The puppet it would have been. He was flinging monkeys back in the 70s in the Amazon on look, film. One of the, the biggest things that the newer Star Wars is are lacking 
is the Practic- practicality. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. I think that's Everything. what Favreau brought mm-hmm. back is that they have they have Gosh. absolutely gone too much digital, too yeah. much. Just you because can you it. can do it doesn't mean you should. That's right. Again, and I gotta is, be honest. Again, until, bringing it back. Oh, please. Easier doesn't necessarily mean well, yeah. better. Uh, again, it's well, also, it's the perfect blend, right? And uh, this is totally off subject, but I'm praying just because they announced the new the new Beetlejuice movie officially is coming oh, out. Oh, yeah. I'm praying to God Tim Burton does a mixture of practical. And digital stuff because he's gone. He when he went so digital, ruined it. for me. It just took. I mean, took his me practical builds were yeah. so special. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, when it comes to living things, they still don't have it to to where the CGI meets practical. It just doesn't. Yeah. Just doesn't do it. No. Just doesn't do it yet. It will be there. And, and I, oh, I'm sorry to get this off my chest, but I hate oh, when no. they do animals. Oh CGI. yeah, it's true. Yeah. The worst. The worst. Like I can't. I can't stand it. I, the I, only I miss rather... Favreau ever, in my opinion. The only miss was uh, didn't he do uh, book. No, Lion King. Lion King, King, which was, and it was, for me, he it was. Did, he did Jungle Book too, though, and it was pretty good. I think, I think Jungle so, Book yeah. was, but, a, but animals, but, but for sorry. me, Lion yeah. King in particular. Cannot do it the like animals. That. It, it takes was... the soul out of the creatures, in my opinion. Look, and I, I just, they I should have used like real them. lions, Like that it. scene in The Revenant, yeah. you know? Everyone was talking about the bear attack. I literally could not stand that film for that scene alone. Uh, there were some amazing moments in that movie. The Revenant? But when they, yeah, the, the Revenant. I think Revenant, Revenant. Yeah. When the, when the bear attacked, it just took me out of the movie. I was like, it's clearly yeah. a fake CGI bear. Like, yes. and I don't understand. There were better moments in the movie, the bear, well, which was, was done say, in the late eighties. No, but it was I was a real say, bear. It was Kodiak. No, I was to say bear. there are bears that can do that and would have done that work because the they they train them to I do think that. You're that would have edge been... with Harris. No. With, yes, with, with the bear. Alec Baldwin and great. And... That was a great. thing. No, you're thinking about the edge. That was great. I love that movie. There was no movie called the bear. There's a show called The Bear. It's on anyway, Hulu. It's, anyway, about it's not about bears. Yeah, no bears anyway, there show. are amazing animals and amazing animal trainers that you can accomplish those things with. And so I, I never understood, especially with The Revenant. That one blew my mind. I was like, why did they not use a real bear? They could have absolutely done that. Even if they had used a stunt guy, and when the guy's face came up the way DiCaprio's did, you could have put DiCaprio's face on the stunt guy with CGI. Yes, you could have. But yeah. don't use the fake bear. I don't understand. They've yeah. got, this I've is seen... the most passion we've got yeah. out of Matt this whole conversation. Sorry. He's I just I hate when they when they CGI animals. It yelling. just doesn't work. It doesn't work. It, they should just call it animation. Don't play yeah. it off as a real animal. It doesn't play as a real animal. It well, just doesn't. Joe, you're right. did you fact check that? You yeah, you're right. I know. Oh, you're nice. Correct. It was the nice. edge. That's what I was talking about. Yeah, the they they got to pick on me to make sure. That was sure Bart that, you know, the Bear, by the way. That's what I meant. Keep Bart. Me down. It was Bart Keep the Bear level. in yeah. the Edge. Amazing oh, trainer. Yeah. Now, Bart. He was a Kodiak, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Grizzly, a big so grizzly. That's what I meant. That's the, what I but meant. there are subsequent generations of that now. There are many guys who have bears that way. They can pull all that stuff off because they've trained them to do all that. And I just don't understand why they didn't. For a movie like that, that took time with every moment. Yeah. I don't understand it. That really blew me, my mind. I was like, "Why are you doing? You're ruining this movie for me." So, I, how did you feel about this? Yeah, because it was because it's the, the, the Matt. The, you don't need to keep going because the Bro, cinematography brother, was so incredible. You don't need to keep going. It was about so this incredible. The storytelling was so it. incredible. Yeah. But you're if you're going to be that out. good, yeah. how do you take the fans out of it with with something like that? Can we turn off like his microphone? You know what I think it is. I'm going to speak for everyone in that movie because I don't know any of them. I think it's about control because. One thing that I have also found since working on the volume is not everyone wants to use it because it means you can't change things as late in the game. So Mm -hmm. I wonder if it was that they Mm -hmm. wanted to have such precise control over everything that that bear did. Mm -hmm. Besides the fact that, I mean, I I don't care if a bear's trained. I don't think I would want to shoot with a real bear attacking. Well, here's, That's here's, terrifying. So here's the thing. So here's the thing. The oh, guys God. that raise them from the time they're a little cub. They have nothing to worry no, about. No, no, no. It's not that. They specifically, I've actually seen the guys, oh. the documentaries of the guys that, that show the, the way that they get their bears to do that. So bears naturally do this, that thing and that clawing thing. And and they they do they first start it with like, like when they're push up. when they're yeah when they're young and they start doing it with like balls and stuff. And then they do it where they they naturally have them do that to them. So it would have to be the guy who raised the bear from a cub. Uh. And but there are guys with the same kind of hair, and all they would have to do is just on that one shot, because it would have been way more poignant. You're talking about the reference specifically. The yeah. Revenant. Yeah. Revenant. Yeah, the Revenant. Revenant. I keep, I keep, so say the Revenant. I keep calling it irreverent. Yeah. yeah. In that yeah. one see, I think what they wanted to have was to be able to see DiCaprio's face while the bear was on him, right? Yeah. Now, but how much more powerful would have been if the bear was doing it and tearing the guy and it was the stunt guy and in just one shot? The guy comes up and it's DiCaprio. And you could yeah. have then with the CGI put DiCaprio's face on the stunt guy and you would have had it seamless. You wouldn't have known because yeah, they could do it really, really well. And then you could have 
you know, a little bit Matt. tighter. Frame out just a little bit. I don't know. Matt, it's time for oh, your bagel. You spent a little bit of time thinking time. about this I watched this it movie. frame by frame because I yeah. literally wanted, I literally was like, why? Well, Tweak, now I yeah. want you to get to ask someone on that movie. I really do. I really, really do. I'm I sure there's a understand. podcast about the revenue. Also, too, there was, one? wait, hold on. There was one other, there was one other <laughs> thing that really got me. When, if we, when if you go back to the revenue again, yes. I'm literally going to Why this movie, dude? Wait, yeah. It's not because even. Because I'm, I'm a, I'm a survival, just... survivalist at heart. I'm what? also I'm, I'm also really into nature and animals. I love animal training. This is like my thing, right? So the one thing that also got me to is below freezing temperatures. All right. If you have a guy who decides to walk through the stream, yeah. he's dead because his feet freeze. Yeah. yeah, yeah that yeah, got yeah. me too. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, you're talking about the bear attack in that movie. I think at that point, I was like, how many? It was like yeah. How many? The, <laughs> the really horrible, say. awful, very yeah. bad day. Whatever. I that know. Yeah, yeah. I know. It, it went too far in it was some a, aspects. It was a three-hour attack. He fell off of a waterfall like a giant. He fell off yeah. everything. He was shot. Yeah. He was killed. He was yeah. made. It he was almost slept like inside he slept of a bear. In a bear. Yeah. It was. It was, just, just, it was essentially like it was like an old school '80s film where, like, for some reason, it was Roadhouse, but Rambo the doesn't die. It was just you know, Rambo. I just what? don't understand Roadhouse because the aren't those yeah, exactly. movies like aren't those movies? Shouldn't they be about the science? Shouldn't they be about the survivalist aspects? Like, isn't that what makes it more human and more interesting? I don't know. Because the filmmaking was so good, I, I just it got me that they didn't base it in in any sort of yeah. reality when it comes to the science of surviving through stuff like that. Because there are survival stories like that out there where people have gone are through. Are there movies like that. that you think have done that well? Um, yeah, I think. Uh, Castaway was brilliant in that way. It just never, it never veered off ever into absurdity. Of, uh, into abs of what it would be right. like to be marooned on an island. Everything was true. really, was, was really that the yeah. Yes. yes. Everything was really it took on him, what on 14, 15 years to get that made too. And then there was yeah. an, and then there was another one um, with um, river, uh, river uh, ones. What is no, no, no. With um, <laughs> where they get where, he, where he's on the it. boat and uh, he. Oh my god, I forget the name. Where he's what, on the boat. Waterworld. <laughs> Dead on, Joe. So accurate. Oh. So accurate. The gills? Yeah, and when his boat collapses yeah. and Kevin Costner, the whole world blew up and he literally has one line. My boat. My boat. Um, yeah. yeah, no, okay. I forget which one I it like was. Waterworld. Uh, there was another one that it's was right. pretty darn good. Um, there were moments. Overboard. The guy on a boat. Yeah, he was, he was marooned at sea. Um, <laughs> was that the one that Robert Redford yeah, did? Yeah, I think it was that. Um, oh, yeah, Robert called. Redford did it. That was a really good one. All, All is lost. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Sam. Yeah, th th that was, Can we that edit out Sam's voice so people think we remembered that, please? No. There was another one. There was another one that where the science did get a little iffy, but it's a, based off a true story. Independence where, Day. No, the, these people get. Uh, I think their boat goes down, and they're they're on a floaty for they're floating, and and they get they, sharks. Ugh. Just sharks. Yeah. Sharks come picking them off. Come picking them off. And also uh, alive did a really good job yeah, at depicting cool. oh, mm -hmm. these stories. I know there's a redo of it now. Um, a non-English version redo. It's called the. Uh, Something on Netflix they just released, but oh, really? the original was alive, huh. and that that did a very good job as well, showing what that would be like if you're you know trapped in an environment like that. I don't know. I just wanted more out of that out of the Revenant because it won awards and everything. I don't know. It just practical is always more. better when you can do it. Yeah. I think so. I mm -hmm. even just I yeah, not more. to digress too much, but I even love hand drawn animation versus the CGI. I appreciate what Pixar did. That was interesting. But when they just updated hand-drawn animation to computer programs doing it, you lost the eyes. Like, look at old school Looney Tunes yeah. and Tom and Jerry and True. some of the original Disney cartoons. Like, the hand drawings added such a dimension and dynamic to it. I, it's really lost me with the CGI. You lose something. As good as Frozen was, to me, there's something more You're organic. You're definitely a father of daughters. Yes, yeah. I am. <laughs> There's something I love more. I you're referencing Frozen. Yeah. Well, because that was a CGI. As good Frozen as and The Revenant. Rever yeah. I loved it. As well, good as Frozen now you go to is. My kids. I got kids. Let me tell but you, that moose in Frozen should have been a real do you moose. Have, do, you have, do you have kids? No. Okay. All right. I don't so, either. yeah, he doesn't have nobody. I'm the only one asking. I have Shmi. I have Shmi. But, but, I, yeah, but no, as good as Frozen was, I go back and I watch like Cinderella. And the hand drawings in that, there was some dimension Yo, that no. was so. I What's just loved it. Bambi. Bambi. Well, it's another Dude, one. These, hand drawn. these they look were all hand archaic. Drawn. They look Dude. like step. No, what are you talking about? The eyes. Flip, the emotion. Yeah, I gotta be honest. They, they didn't about it. barely had eyes no, back no, no, then. No, they did, dude. They're they like, did. You might as well sew some buttons dude, on these they cartoons. Did. No, that's not what true. are you talking Peter about? Peter Pan, yeah, Sword the Emotion, Stone, should, Merlin. Yeah, those yeah. eyes are more. There's more depth to those than the eyes in the animation. Some, you can't you explain it. Insane. Something about it. You can't explain it. <laughs> you guys are nuts. He's got that je ne sais quoi. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's exactly so what I was right, going to yeah. say. You took the words right out of my mouth. Yeah, it's a juge, I guess. <laughs> it's a juge. It's a je ne sais quoi. That's what I was going to say. <laughs>
Um, uh, guys, is that it? Really? Oh, oh boy! Wow, we're over. Oh, already. hey. Well, Please. you know what? We'll have to continue this. Can we at the Galaxy Con? Yeah, yeah. we'll, take, we'll pick up this conversation right. if you're down. All right. On our live show, quickest and hour. Will be like, you guys are so old. Why? I, why are you? I know. Yapping about. I know. The good old claymation. Days. And, I know. And, and, and I loved. I absolutely loved the old Rudolph movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever see Blue Lagoon? What? Blue Lagoon. Uh, hey, God. I I'm yeah. a big. I'm a big Gumby now, I, guy. I, when I was a kid, I actually really liked that movie. Well, that movie Blue has Lagoon. got a whole bunch of baggage on it now, man. It does. So. Yeah, I know. Yeah. They were all underage and nude. I know. Terrible. I know. But I again, I bringing it back the, to, to what nude. What a way to go. Yeah, we we go full circle here. We have to. That's the thing. I go full nude. We like to. We 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 save the cat. I feel like I'm just opening getting started. Should we go another hour? Yeah. No. Oh, God. Why don't we talk about coffee? We got to cut yeah. it off. Yeah. Another Leo movie, yeah, man. Yeah, please. Let's talk about The Beach. The Beach. Oh, I knew it. Oh, that's it. Oh. It is a good movie, though. Everybody, oh. thank it's you really so one. much for watching this yes. episode of Brother Love Pod. We love you so much. Tune in every Thanks Friday. Thanks, for being here. Hey, everybody in the house. Yes. God bless you. Have a great weekend. We will we'll see you next Friday. Matt might not be here, but we'll see you. <laughs> God bless everybody. Have a great weekend. Bye. Hey, what's up, everybody? The Lawrence, Lawrence Brothers, Brothers are, here. are here. Thank you so much for enjoying this week's episode of the Brotherly Love Pod. And if you want more of this show, check out our premium feed on Supercast. That's right, where you'll see ad-free episodes, monthly AMAs, behind-the-scene content, and so much more. That's brotherlylove.supercast.com to join. Check out our link tree and subscribe on all platforms. We'll see you all next, next week. week.